Hi, this is Simon Upstill. I hope you're all safe and well, and welcome to part two of this multi-part tutorial in which we're looking at creating this Eye of Sauron effect. So today we're going to be working a bit more on the eye itself, finishing that off with some extra details. So this might not be the most exciting part, but I hope it'll show you that in layering up this effect, you can make it look a whole lot more interesting. So the first thing I want to do is to come back to the project in which we made this fire element. And I don't know whether you remember, we made a temporary alternative version. So let's go back and make that. Let's duplicate this group. I'll turn it off. Let's call this fire B, because that other element that we made, I think is going to be useful. So let's open this up. And what we did was for both clouds generators, we changed the scale. So we went for 16 and 32. And we did the same here, 16 and 32. And it's giving this rather nice sort of diffuse fire effect that's going to be, I think, rather handy for us. So what we're going to do is come to the share menu and then export it. We're going to make sure to select ProRes 444 and we're going to save it into our elements bin as fire B. Click save to render it out. So now we can come back to our master project and inside this master I group, just above Iris, let's make a new group. Let's call this uh, Wide Fire. And let's import Fire B. Come to Properties, let's set its Blend Mode to Screen. And let's just quickly copy that Levels from the Iris group onto our Wide Fire group. And in doing so, we'll need to swap the blend mode of that group to screen. Just but probably want to just make a little bit of a change to this so it's not the same. So I'm going to reduce the blue value even more, something like that. And so then we just need to do the usual of scaling our fire element. So I'm going to scale it down, but I'm actually going to scale it out on X and then bring it up on Y like this. And then what I want to do is I want to mask this group so it's we're not intersecting the iris at all. So instead of using that pupil mask that we originally created, I'm going to select the circle mask tool. Hold down the shift and option key and drag out a mask from the center like so. Center it up and let's invert it. And then we just need to feather it. Let's feather it in just a little bit like that. And then we can do the usual of taking our Fire B element, duplicating it, and then let's flop it through 180 degrees on X. Let's bring it down like that. Let's change its speed. Let's go for 125. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but uh, you get the overall idea. Just trying to make it different. And we can duplicate it a couple more times change the speed, let's go for 135 here, let's change, let's reverse the direction. I won't talk you through all of this, you can see what I'm doing, you, you know the, the, the score by now. And so I think we want to take all of these and reduce their opacity, let's go down to about 40. And you can see how that's really helped. I'll turn that on and off, just giving us those extra layers, maybe even that's too much, maybe even go down to 30 much more interesting look now already. And I also want to make a third fire element. And this is going to be some very small flames that we can see flickering around the outside edge. So let's again come back to our fire build project. What I'm going to do is again, I'm going to duplicate this group. Let's call this one flames. And let's turn off fire B. So let's first of all set up our clouds. I'm going to start with the one that's turned off here. Let's set the horizontal scale to eight. Let's set the speed to one. We'll open up the gradient editor, and I just want to make a little bit of adjustment, bring the, bring the black and white in just a bit like that. 
And now let's come to our other clouds, the one that we're displacing. Again, let's set the horizontal scale to eight and the speeds to one. And here we're going to do, do something slightly different. Uh, I'm going to make sure to turn off wriggle just while I set this up. So I'm going to take this opacity tab here and set its location to 50%. And then I'm going to drag that black value away from the bottom bar there. So we've only got white. So actually, I'm going to delete that wriggle behavior there and reapply it because I'm going to use it for a different function. So and that's to wriggle this opacity value here. So or rather the location of that opacity value. So I'm going to click on the location, add parameter behavior, wriggle, that's off the bottom of the screen there, but you'll be able to find it. So the amount is going to be 45. The frequency is going to be 1.5. And let's have a noisiness of 0.3. You see it's sort of flickering the opacity there. And then I'm just going to come back to the clouds generator and do something I've forgotten to do, which is just to adjust these layer strengths so I'm going to go for 0.51 and 1 and 1. So 0.51, 1, 1, 1. And it's just giving us a much more powerful looking effect. Another tweak I want to make is to come to the bump map filter and let's change its direction to 90 and the amount to 0.2. So because it's a little bit difficult to envisage flames when, when they're going downwards like this, I'm going to come to the, the top of the group here, the flames group, and I'm going to set the X rotation to 180. So now it's moving upwards. A little bit hard, a bit, a little bit easier for our brains to understand that, I think, going in that direction. Next, I want to work on the rectangular mask. I'm going to set its position to negative 480. And let's open up the mask controls. I'm going to set the width to 75 and the height to 480. And I'm going to have a feather of negative 10. So we've got this much, much narrower flame-like element. The other thing I want to do is I want to adjust these two rate values for the clouds because I want it to be moving quite a lot quicker. So let's bump that up to 0.2 in both instances. And then finally, let's look at the filters on this rectangular mask. I'm going to delete the Gaussian blur and for the crystallize, I'm just going to reduce the size down to 15. But I also want to add an additional filter. So I'm going to come to Filters, Distortion, and I'm going to look for Ripple. And I want to put that ripple behind the crystallize. So I'm going to have a Y center of 1000, an amplitude of 32. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to reduce the mix value down to 75. And this is just going to give us a much more organic looking edge to the to the whole effect. You can see how it's giving a slightly more flame-like look. Now, to save us a bit of time when we come to composite these elements in our final scene, I'm going to duplicate this rectangular mask and then just move it over on X. And then I'm going to duplicate it again. Again, just move its X position like so. Duplicate it again. Let's have some over the other side like so. Duplicate it one more time. Something like that. So now we've got five sets of these. It's going to make it a little bit easier to composite. OK, so the next step, obviously, is to come to the Share menu Export movie, make sure we've got 444 selected, and we're going to save this out as flame, or flames plural. So back in our master project, we're going to do the usual thing, make a new group. We're going to import our flames element. Let's set its blend mode to screen. Let's set the blend mode of that group to screen. Let's copy the levels onto that group. Let's call this flames. Just going to take that levels and use the blue value, reduce that right down. Let's reduce the green even more. And then I think I'm going to set this opacity way down to about 20. And then we're just going to do our usual trick of scaling these down. 
making copy. Now what I've been doing with the copies, I've, I've been changing the speed, but actually the, it's probably a lot more sensible just to change the timing by dragging along on the mini timeline there. So we get a, a very different result. So let's flop this one 180 on X, maybe move it up on Y. So not gonna show you again how to do all of this, but just duplicate it a few times. So as usual, just building up the layers Remembering to keep offsetting the timing and so on until we've got something like this. So again, I think this really helps to give it a lot more interest. We turn that on, on and off again. Just that extra level of detail I think really helps. So there's another thing we probably need to do here and that's to mask out the pupil. So we'll grab that image mask off the iris group there and Alt drag it, Alt or Option drag it to the flames group and it just tidies that up. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to duplicate this group. So right click, duplicate, and I'm just going to scale it down so we get that, all of that in the iris area there. And in fact, I'm going to take these layers inside this new group and set their opacity all the way up to 100. And then let's maybe just rotate this group through 180, like so, and possibly just dra dragging on the mini timeline just to change its timing. And that's actually quite nice too. So we've got these very, very tiny flame details inside the, the iris area, and I think that's rather nice. And one other thing we could do at this point, just to glue it all together, is to come up to the main group here, filters, and if we just add a basic glow, and let's just set the threshold down to 0.5. And it just pulls out the brighter bits. Don't want to go crazy because this glow is really not very good, but it just adds a little bit of something, I think. So there's just one final little detail I'd like to add, and that's to create a much brighter edge to the pupil. So to do that, we're going to make yet another group right at the top here above those latest flames new group, and I'm going to import that original fire element, fire A. And let's just scale it down till it's the right size for that area there. So we're coming down to about 25. And then we're just going to do our usual trick of duplicating it and rotating it and changing its timing and duplicating it again, rotating it, changing its timing duplicating it one more time, rotating it, and again, changing its timing. So let's call this edge. We'll select all of these. We'll set their blend mode, I think, to add, and do the same with the group. And we'll just grab our levels off the iris there, add that. Now, I think what we want to do here is we want to increase the intensity. So I'm going to bring that value up there, maybe even bring the that value in like that. So we've got something very bright. So now we need to mask it off so it's just on the edge of the pupil. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab that image mask and copy it on to that group there. And we're also going to duplicate it. So right click duplicate. So I'm going to temporarily turn off that top image mask. The lower one, I'm going to select it and come to filters and add a Gaussian blur. And I'll set the amount to 24. Then let's turn back on our top image mask here and we'll set its blend mode, mask blend mode, I should say, to subtract. Then we'll come to filters, stylize, and we'll add a min max. We'll switch the mode to maximum and then we'll just increase that until we get our edge like that. And then what we'll also do is we'll add stylize, crystallize just to break up that edge maybe increase the speed so it's nice and buzzy, like that. And we've now got that brighter inner edge, and that works a lot better, I think. And one final thing I wanted to point out just before we finish is that we can animate our pupil if we come to that Bezier there, which is the master source for that, that pupil cutout, and then we animate its X scale value. So you'll notice that 
that opens out the opens out the pupil and we can get it to blink just by animating that and that's going to look really effective I think. So that's that's it for part two. Quite a bit more to come in the next part so I hope you can join me again for that. So thanks very much indeed for watching and stay safe and well.